ladies and gentlemen, we just drove past uh, the hotel because we want to go to go into drive through the University of Cape Coast. So we just drove by the hotels. Uh, and I should think about know, the next maybe 20, 30 minutes, we'll be back for you to check in. Basically, Elmina, as you see, see uh, and those of you who are going there privately, is the was the very first town in this part of the world in 1471 that the Portuguese came into contact with. They landed on the coast of Elmina and realized they also saw that we, our ancestors, were doing business in gold dust, business in ivory, in spices, and other artifacts. So, so when you first get in, if you know if I'm, they stop briefly to have a trade with us. It was the amount of gold dust they saw that made them made the exclamation and they call the place Mina de Oro. Mina. Gold Mina de Oro, gold mine in Portuguese. But what they re didn't realize was that the gold didn't come from Alivina, the gold from came from Ashanti and other places. It only came to Elmina because Elmina had salt. Salt is still being produced in Albina. So they also came for trade. Exchange with gold for salt and other spices and artifacts. Excuse me. So, yes. Where is the salt being produced? Is it in the pond or they drive the ocean? How is it being produced? Yeah, the salt are in the ponds. Uh -huh. When you go on top, uh, when, you, when we drive around Albina, the salt are in ponds. So it's seawater that goes yes. in there. Okay. Yeah, so. It's salt, it's rock salt. Yeah. And along the coast of, well, of West Africa, we have salt being produced on commercial quantity along the coast of Ghana and that of Senegal on commercial quantity. So we turn it in our on our left hand side into Cape Coast University, University of Cape Coast, which started in 1962. Another initiative by President Nkrumah. You always go back to his speech when he said the black man is capable of taking off his own affairs. So he wasn't going to go back to the British and say, give me teachers to teach my people. So he set up this university as a state teacher training facility. It wasn't just a full-fledged university. Then, as a teacher, a specialized train, um, teacher training facility, the little town became University of Cape Coast. This is where I graduated from in 2000. Uh, when we realized that the school wasn't, the demand for it went down because everybody that came here was to be trained with philosophy and education to go out and teach. So the demand for it was because people were not around the now because we saw uh, teachers don't have any good pay. Yeah. So the, the, it was no longer, uh, so they, they, they took out the education, they made it an option. You either come in to be a teacher or you can come in and read in other subjects. Today the university also has a, a medical school as a medical school, I came in and did tourism. That was about the, we were, we were about the second badge that came to do tourism, well, for right one. This, what you are facing is a central administration, and a central administration. Now, when the university, when it, when it was uh, a teacher training facility, the only campus was the area to your left, they called the old uh, uh, site. That's old site. Now, from the old site was just too small. Now, and then when they became a university, they expanded to include the new site, which is uh, 
they try to call science. So when you're on campus, they say you are going to science, you are going to the new site area. The right hand side facility is the hospital for the university, the university hospital, and also the primary and uh, primary school area is also found here, downtown, I mean down on the right hand side. The University of Cape Coast is the most integrated of all the universities. There's a, a big community just outside of the university, a, a village. Uh, some of them have even taken over parts of the university land. And the philosophy and sociology department are against them being resettled. That's the, the only difference. So if you look beyond, on the left hand side, beyond you see a village, I mean, a, a, a local community that surround the university. Some universities, because of the lack of adequate facilities, when I came here, I lived in the in the village for two years. The third year, then I went into uh, into a university hall called Atlantic Hall. That is the junior high school for the university. Oh, yes, he did. It just unpaused by itself. Yeah, um, it. yeah I remember. One, two, three, I remember. Yeah, how many students here? Yeah, you have about 30,000 wow. students. Yeah, it's a big school. Wow. It's very large. It's a, it's a big. And these are the third largest in the country. Accra okay. is the first, Kumasi is second, and this one. So our guys are oldest, followed by Kumasi, and then University of Cape Coast. So when they study here, they have a job ready for them on the field that they go in? Yes. Uh, it depends on what you study. If you study uh, education, then you have a job ready for you. You have a teaching job ready for you. So that's the community I was talking about to your left hand side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of these communities have been turned into hostels. Different. There's probably no house on the left hand side you will go and will not find students. Mm as boys okay. yeah it depends on which you also it's also depend on which university you want to go to and which course you want to read to become a, a teacher you either come to university of Cape Coast or university of university of education in Winneba and Winneba is BA is about the halfway between Cape Coast and Mina <coughs> these are the two uh, highest learn of for teachers <laughs> So this is a newer section, I mean, this is the area they call science. Ranging from single subject to medicine, it's all here.
this is the central library to your right and all these facilities that are coming out will be lecture theaters for students so the block we just seen in front of the science and the university this area was built by the russians so the architecture is more of a russian architecture it's a close and it, we can't turn when we go up there so we just it's a, a close road Wait. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, they are, they are contractors built it. Russian contractors built it. I mean, did they get a grant or, I mean, donate the money? That, I don't know, but, uh, you know, Kwame Nkrumah was more uh, leaning towards the, 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 I mean, though he said we we're non aligned, he was more leaning towards the East. Okay. Yeah, so these were all part of the accusations that he was, he was, he was socialist. Mm -hmm. He said Ghana was a non-aligned country. So if you wanted something in the east, he could go for it. If it's the west, he could go for it. It's a big campus, but then the developed area is very small. We almost through with a campus tour. going straight these are the other I mean, residential areas for some of the students we have about five halls of residence here <coughs> owned by the university and about three of other five by private developers on the basis of build operate and transfer BOT you build your operate and you transfer so you build they put in the investment, you will pray to get the money, but eventually you're gonna to have to uh, push it back to the, I mean, give it back to the hotel, I mean, to the, to the university at uh, when the contract expires. The other main road now could left. The university has two main avenues. Science, this one is the main avenue for the science. I mean, when you're coming, that we call this one the gate, the eastern gate. We came to the west, the west gate. When I'm going out to the east gate. Some of the halls here is the very one to the left. It's Castle Hayford Hall. Alcohol, 
and Kwame Nkrumah Hall that are on the roadside, I mean, that you can see. Oh, one Africa. Okay, one Africa. 